All right, happy Thursday. Uh, we're going to talk about European Exploration Part 2. This is the second part to uh, the video from Monday. And this is going to be pretty short for you here. Uh, first of all, consequences of exploration. I talked about all the people that explored on Tuesday. Here's kind of what happens. Um, first of all, the Portuguese, I mentioned this, they developed something called the Caravel. That's a picture of a Caravel right now. It's going to be a ship that can go across the ocean. You can sail from Portugal all the way to Florida with as few as 12 men. And that's super important because that small little thing called the Black Death killed a bunch of people. So labor-saving devices are important. This is like the poster child for work smarter, not harder. Another big thing that's going to happen uh, because of exploration, there's going to be huge amounts of gold and silver that are sent to Europe from the New World between 1500 and 1650. Estimates are 16 million kilograms of silver, 183,000 kilograms of gold. Uh, if we were in class, we would do a class exercise where we see exactly how much money that's worth. But since we're not together, we can't really do that. So I'll just tell you. Um, roughly speaking, it is about nine and a half billion dollars of gold it's roughly nine and a half billion dollars of silver it's between 18 and 19 billion dollars today that is gonna flood into Europe that's more money than Europe had ever seen before and it's gonna play havoc it's gonna wreck their economy uh, there's gonna be major price increases because there's so much money the value of the currency is just nosedive plummet Wages drop, the price of food skyrockets, people are living worse in 1650 than they did in 1500 simply because of this inflation. But on a positive side, there are some improvements in glass making. Uh, glass making is improved, which leads to glass windows, it leads to the development of telescopes, and it leads to the development of microscopes. Microscopes are going to be important for science. Telescopes are going to be important for astronomy. Glass windows are going to be important for everybody because suddenly you can have smaller rooms and you can light them up and you can get rid of some of the, the dark dinginess of um, medieval houses and stuff like that. Now here's another big consequence. It's the slave trade. Uh, the importation of slaves is going to kind of undergo a renaissance during this time. Uh, for example, you're going to end up with um, millions of people. Uh, it's estimated somewhere around 10 to 20 million people are stolen from Africa and moved to the New World. I don't have those exact numbers with me because they're in the office, but it is a sizable portion of people, 10 million plus. Um, we end up with the majority of the people going to Spanish America or Brazil. In fact, Brazil takes 40% of all slaves and the average lifespan of a slave in Brazil, you're dead by the age of 24. Um, Brazil ends up taking over 4 million slaves. Uh, now in Africa, this leads to the collapse of complete social systems. It leads to gender imbalance, famine, warfare, and some of the problems today that Africa has can be traced all the way back to slavery. Other parts in Africa, issues are traced back to colonization. So Africa is basically wrecked between slave trade and European colonization. Now, uh, a lot of slaves are captured by African natives uh, and sold to Europeans. There was already a system of slavery in Africa. Uh, it had been practiced for centuries, but it changes when the Europeans get involved. Um, Oftentimes these prisoners were, or these people were debtors or war prisoners or something like that and they're sold into slavery and uh, the Europeans take them away. Now there's controversy surrounding the European slave trade almost immediately. As soon as the European slave trade starts, there are some who say it's inhumane, it's immoral, it's, it needs to stop, while others are going to say it's an economic necessity, we have to do this. Now, it's probably the most important thing besides slavery is going to be this idea of the Colombian exchange. And here's a definition. I uh, don't usually give definitions, but this is an important one. The Colombian exchange is a transfer of biological materials between Europe and the Americas. This transfer is both intentional and unintentional. 
Now some of the things that are going to be transferred, food, drinks, disease, and even cooking techniques. Alright, so let's look at food. Uh, there's this food you've probably never heard of called the potato. Uh, it's originally from South America. It grew in rocky, cold places, and it becomes very common in Germany, Ireland, and Britain because all three of those places are cold, rocky, and dark. And it's going to become the most important crop in Europe by the 1800s. But just a funny fact for you, um, before the potato became commonplace, it was actually seen as the devil's food because if you read the Christian Bible, potato's not mentioned in there anywhere. Uh, fish. Before I give you fish, word of the day. Uh, the word of the day is flower, F-L-O-W-E-R. Tried to plant some flowers today, but it's about to rain, so I did not get it done. So today's word of the day is flower. All right, back to this. Fish. There are new types of fish discovered off the coast of Canada. They're brought back to Europe, and they become tasty dinners. Uh, the tomato, you probably never heard of that before. Um, that's originally from Central America. It was a crop grown by the Aztecs. It was originally more of a, a yellow-orange color, not the, the orange-red we see today. And um, Europeans had never seen anything like it before, so uh, they didn't know what to call it. Um, the potato, by the way, was known as the palm de terre, or the dirt apple. The tomato became known as the pomodoro, the golden apple. And if you've ever had Italian cuisine, you know how important uh, that uh, tomatoes are to Italy now. Um, as important as those were, corn was really seen as the miracle crop. It's very efficient at feeding a lot of people. On average, for every one kernel of corn that you plant, you get 70 kernels back on the, the, uh, the corn cob. So corn is going to be used for everything. Corn is going to be put into uh, storage. and. Even though potato is really the important crop, corn is what's going to be feeding most of the people. And then there's sugar. Sugar today is very important. Sugar in the 1500s was very important. Um, here in America especially, we have a sweet tooth. Um, but sugar is going to coincide with the rise of slavery. As sugar becomes more important, uh, sugar plantations are going to expand. And who's working on the sugar plantations? Slaves. Now, sugar is run to replace honey due to a decline in beekeeping. Uh, monasteries, like uh, Catholic monasteries, kept bees and then they would sell the honey. Well, because of the Reformation, there's a decline in the number of monasteries, which means there's a decline in the number of bees. And then, once again, uh, the sugar trade is going to expand slavery because somebody has to work on those sugar plantations. Drinks. Chocolate was originally a drink from Central America. Um, if you are um, of Latin American descent or if you know people who are of Latin American descent, they, there's still a lot of chocolate drink in those, uh, those cultures. And it becomes a delicacy in Europe and now it's sold pretty much everywhere at gas stations, you name it. Um, chocolate's pretty ubiquitous. Uh, coffee. Some of you might be coffee fans. I personally am not. Coffee is originally from the Middle East. It was a, uh, an Arab Muslim delicacy. Um, it's eventually taken to South America. It, it's found to grow extremely well in South America. And then it's brought back to Europe in its um, drinkable form. And coffee houses pop up all over the place in Britain and in France. And in Britain especially, coffee houses become the place where a lot of business is carried out. For example, Lloyd's of London, which is one of the largest insurance firms in the world now, started as a coffee house. Now you also have tea. Uh, tea originally is from India and China. It's still grown there a lot. Uh, it's taken to South America and it's found to grow well there as well. Uh, tea is supposed to be the alternative to coffee for women. Tea was seen as more of a delicate drink than coffee was. And tea, in many, many, many ways, builds the British Empire. And if you take World History too, we take some time to talk about that in that class. All right, disease. There are many diseases that are brought from Europe to the New World. Um, and they're very, very deadly because the Native Americans in both North and South America, they have no immunity whatsoever to the European diseases. 
And this is just a partial list of the diseases that are brought to North and South America. You got smallpox, influenza, cowpox, measles, mumps, pneumonia, chickenpox. Estimates are that the death rate when all these diseases are brought to the New World is over 90%. Nine out of every 10 people from the New World die of these Old World diseases. It's estimated that um, you know somewhere between 25 and 30 million people lived in North and South America before Europeans get there. And within 150 years, that population is down to 5 million. So um, the diseases hit hard amongst the na native populations here. And then we've got cooking styles, because why not? Um, first of all, you've probably heard of this before, barbecue. So you're like, hmm, I like barbecue. Well, barbecue was originally a cooking technique used by the Carib group. Uh, the Taino were the primary ones to use it, but just to make it easy for you, the Caribs. Uh, the Carib were native to Hispaniola. That's where modern day Haiti and Dominican Republic are located. And what they would do is they would take meat, they would smoke it over green wood, they put it over a fire, and they would just let the, the heat and the smoke cook the meat. And um, they were, they called this cooking technique a boucan. The French call it boucanier, English call it buccaneer, and the Spanish call it barbaco, which is where we get barbecue. And it tastes great, smells great, most people like barbecue. Uh, you also have fried meats that come to the New World because of African slaves. I know this sounds like a stereotype and I promise it's not. The best example of this fried food that comes from Africa is fried chicken. Uh, but that's not the only food that they would fry. The fried chicken is the best uh, known and the, the most long-lasting of these fried meat techniques that came from Africa. All right, so nice and short, uh, just a couple notes. There will, be, um, there will be one more video on Tuesday. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in it yet. Maybe just a little bit about the, uh, the American, the big three American groups, the Aztec, the Inca, and the Maya. It won't be very long. Um, the final exam is going to go up on Monday, but I'm asking you not to take it until Tuesday just because there might be a couple questions on that final video about it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, keep working on your SLO. Those will be due soon. Um, just remember your own work is better than any work you can find on the internet. Uh, look at those, those notes and those comments I left you and um, I look forward to reading your finished papers. And then finally, uh, keep working on your museum reviews. Get those turned in as soon as you can. I've already got some from some people. Thank you very much. Uh, the rest of you, get them in, don't forget. So uh, until Tuesday, we'll talk to you later. Uh, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.